Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be discussing some of the many portraits hanging within the hallowed halls of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. While I suppose the exact number of portraits lining the walls of this famous building is somewhat debatable, many subjects have more than one portrait and who knows what secret portraits may hang in closets long forgotten, there are around 60 portrait subjects that we do know about. Over the course of a few videos, we'll cover each and every one of them, diving into who the witch or wizard was, why they have a portrait hanging up in Hogwarts, and anything else of note. Today we'll kick things off alphabetically, which brings us to the portrait of a wizard who needs no introduction, Albus Dumbledore. As many of you will know, Albus Dumbledore was the eldest son of Percival and Kendra Dumbledore, a wizard and witch of primarily magical descent. He grew up in the wizarding community of Mold on the Wold, and went on to become one of the most powerful and well-respected wizards to ever live in modern times. His portrait was made soon after his appointment as headmaster at Hogwarts in the year 1956. Once completed, Dumbledore kept it secure in a cupboard in the headmaster's office within the school. It is said that Dumbledore would visit his portrait often, as the more time one spends with their painted likeness, the more characteristics and personality traits the portrait is able to take on. During these sessions, it's likely that Dumbledore also passed along much of his wisdom and plans for Harry Potter, as his portrait provided much support and was invaluable to Severus Snape after Albus had passed and Snape assumed the position of headmaster at the school. The portrait now hangs among the other former Hogwarts headmasters in the headmaster's office. Ambrose Swat Ambrose Swat was an 18th century professor who eventually became one of Hogwarts headmasters. It is rumoured that before becoming headmaster, he spent time as a friar, which would support the accounts that Swat was a very pious wizard who was incredibly passionate about the study of religion. In fact, there's a motto inscribed on one of his portraits within Hogwarts, which reads, Ora e Labora, which is Latin for pray and work, the motto of the Benedictine Order. Now, I say one of his portraits because Ambrose Swat indeed has two paintings of his likeness hanging up in Hogwarts. The first portrait is of a younger version of the wizard, in which he is wearing a suit. It can be found along the walls within the Grand Staircase. The second is Ambrose's headmaster portrait, presumably painted upon him taking the position as was tradition. This painting can, of course, be found within the headmaster's office alongside Hogwarts' other former headmasters. Both young and old portraits are known for their pious inclinations and typically spend their time performing some form of religious act, such as praying or reading a religious doctrine. Anne Boleyn The presence of Anne Boleyn's portrait within Hogwarts may come as a surprise to many. However, the former Queen of England and second wife of the infamous muggle King Henry VIII had quite the reputation within the Tudor court, with many suggesting that she must have been a witch to have captured the love of their married king. By contrast, within the wizarding community, there were rumours that Anne was in actual fact a squib, a descendant of a magical family but without any powers herself. Regardless of whether or not any of that was true, Anne's blood status and true heritage remain a mystery. Beheaded at the orders of her husband after only three years of marriage, it's no wonder that Anne Boleyn's portrait, which hangs within the grand staircase near the second floor, is a rather anxious one. It is said that she will talk to anyone who passes by about Henry's lessening affections, and that she is rather fond of the female students. Ariana Dumbledore The youngest sibling of Albus Dumbledore, Ariana, had a very troubling childhood in which she was attacked by a group of muggles while she was innocently playing with magic at the mere age of six. As a result, Ariana tragically became an obscurial, a young witch who was so affected by the trauma of her attack that she became intensely ashamed of her powers, suppressing them to the point that her magic became incredibly dangerous. Sadder still, Ariana died as a girl during a dispute between Albus, their brother Aberforth, and Gellert Grindelwald. The true details of her death remain a mystery to this day. Due to her condition, Ariana never attended Hogwarts. However, Aberforth hung her portrait up at the Hogshead Inn in Hogsmeade, which conceals a secret passage into Hogwarts' room of requirement. Her likeness remains rather shy and does not talk to those she does not know. Armando Dippet Headmaster of Hogwarts during the 1940s at the ripe old age of 300 and something, Professor Armando Dippet was the headmaster of the school immediately preceding Albus Dumbledore. 
Tom Riddle, who of course later became Voldemort, was a student during Professor Dippet's tenure as headmaster. It was during this time that Tom reopened the Chamber of Secrets and subsequently framed Rubius Hagrid for the crime, resulting in Armando expelling an innocent young Hagrid. As a former Ravenclaw himself, Professor Dippet's portrait depicts him in blue and bronze robes, which of course hangs in the headmaster's office. Barnabas the Barmy Barnabas the Barmy was a wizard who attempted, and quite obviously failed, to train trolls to perform ballet. It is said that after he attended Hogwarts as a pupil, he went on to become a professional theatrical wizard. Although the rumours suggest that he found success in his career, he was somewhat obsessed with putting on a show that no one in the wizarding world would ever forget. Presumably, this is what led to his absurd attempt to teach trolls how to dance. On the seventh floor of Hogwarts, across the hall from the entrance to the Room of Requirement, hangs a tapestry depicting Barnabas the Barmy in his effort to train trolls in the art of dance. Basil Fronzak Professor Basil Fronzak was the headmaster at Hogwarts sometime before Armando Dippet. Evidently, he was an incredible scholar who had a passion for knowledge and learning. He has at least two portraits hanging up within the school at present, one of which is, of course, his headmaster painting, which is displayed in the headmaster's office alongside his fellows. There is also at least one other, which used to hang within the grand staircase, but was later relocated to the dungeons of the castle. It's unclear how many more portraits of Basil hang on the grand staircase and surrounding area at present. His portrait, which was relocated to the dungeons, used to protect a shortcut from the grand staircase to a second floor corridor near the library. His password to gain access was rumoured to be Studious Success. Apparently, upon his relocation to the dungeon, his portrait was once again charged with guarding another secret passageway, this time to the Grand Staircase. It said that the password to this shortcut was Libraries Liberate. The Bloody Baron As many of you will know, the Bloody Baron is one of the ghosts who roam the halls of Hogwarts at present. But as it turns out, this particular ghost also has a portrait hung upon the walls of the school. As a former student of Hogwarts back in the 11th century, the Bloody Baron was a Slytherin pupil who attended the school soon after it was founded. At some point in his youth, he became infatuated with Helena Ravenclaw, the daughter of one of Hogwarts' founders, Rowena Ravenclaw. After Helena ran away to the Albanian forest, Rowena charged the Bloody Baron with finding her daughter and bringing her back home. Tragically, when Helena refused the Bloody Baron's request to return home with him, he became enraged and murdered her. Devastated by what he'd done, he in turn killed himself. The two returned to Hogwarts to haunt the halls as the Ghost of Ravenclaw, otherwise known as the Grey Lady, and the Ghost of Slytherin, respectively. As for his portrait, the Bloody Baron is represented by an arrangement of pictures in four parts, known as a tetraptic. These paintings hang in the dungeons, and together create a singular image of the Baron dressed in red and unsheathing his sword from its scabbard. Brian Gagwild III The final portrait I'll be covering in today's video is of Brian Gagwild III, a pure-blood descendant of Hogwarts headmaster Brian Gagwild I. Although he was never a headmaster himself, throughout the 17th century, Brian was a huge supporter of education and was instrumental in the efforts to provide all wizarding children with access to schooling outside of their own home. In honour of his support of institutionalised education, Hogwarts has several portraits of Brian Gagwell III hung throughout the school's main hallways. As he also has a portrait within Malfoy Manor, which he frequently visits, he's not always the easiest portrait subject to track down. And with that, we've come to the end of another video. What do you think? Would you like to learn more about the history of Hogwarts portraiture? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams, and forget to live.